Hello and welcome to everyone out there. My name is Muhammad Salman Hunna and I am teaching CCI Data Center for Okta Networks. I have overall 5 years of experience in training Cisco courses. I have worked as a senior network engineer for designing, monitoring and troubleshooting networks. I have designed and implemented many projects for IT and non-IT sectors companies. Talking about my teaching experience, I have in-house patches, corporate trainings, international corporate trainings, as well as online trainings. I am a Cisco certified CCI in data center collaboration and wireless. Apart from this, I have also completed my VCIX NV, or you can say VCAP annual lab exam, and GNCIA. Talking about CCI data center lab blueprint, the entire blueprint is divided into seven parts, starting from data center L2 or L3 connectivity, which consists of basically the layer two technologies, the routing protocols and features like ISIS, MP, the multicast protocols like MP. The second part, which is fifteen percent is into data center fabric infrastructure which focuses on ACI that is fabric discovery the fabric policy the talent policies the fabric monitoring as well as virtual networking the third part comprises of data center fabric connectivity which consists of the L3 outs the VRF lights configuring OSPF P and VXLAN as well. The fourth part consists of data center compute where you have to focus on UCSM, profiles, policies, templates. You need to focus on Hyperflex as well which is a change from version 2 to version 3. The compute such as LAN, SAN, uplinks, the REC server integration, the port mode. The fifth protocol, the fifth is uh, data center storage protocol and features where you need to focus on FC and FC zoning, NP, NPIV, trunking, and also the load balancing and port balancing. The sixth part is data center security and network services where you have to focus on creating ACS on ACI, creating authentication, TACAG, configuring radius. AAA servers, SNMP, and as well as configuring the queuing, policing, and COP profile. The last section comprises of data center automation and orchestration, where you need to focus on the all the automation technologies. Basically, Cisco mentioned only two technologies for now, that is Python and Ansible. Apart from this, you have to focus on data center automation and orchestration tools, both are VCSD, BCNL, Enterprise, and Cloud Center. Let's talk about CCI Data Center Lab over here. What you need to expect in lab, the current question of almost everyone. So the lab is going to be of eight hours. The first three hours, you have to focus on module one, which focuses on design part. You cannot skip this module and jump to another module. You have to be in this module for three hours, and this module is completely scenario based. The backward navigation is visible within this module. The point value is still hidden. Module two comprises of deploying, operating, and optimizing. The questions which are asked by Cisco. Here you will be getting a hands-on on the lab infrastructure when you where you need to complete all the tasks mentioned by Cisco. Let's now focus on the CCI Data Center version 3 technology demo. So Many people have a question, what is ACI, what is ACI multi-pod, what is ACI multi-side? So I thought of taking this topic for now. 
as so what's what what is basically an aci multipod the aci multipod architecture is essentially the capability to expand a pre-existing aci fabric without needing to deploy a brand new fabric from the scratch an aci multipod fabric consists of 2 to 12 aci pods as you can see in the diagram i've mentioned that are connected via interpod network and managed by a single epic cluster so multipod is an evolution of an earlier aci design termed as stretch fabric in this design separate spine and leaf topology would be interconnected via a transit leaf however this design has heavy scalability limitations and do not offer the resilience benefits that are with the multipod from the data plane standpoint, all the pods within the topology are interconnected using an IP routed or you can say interpod network which stands for IPN. The IPN is not managed by EPIC. Instead, the user will configure it separately. Connectivity, connectivity within each pod to the IPN takes place on the spine nodes. But there is no requirement to connect every spine node to IPN. All interpol traffic is encapsulated with VXLAN. Multi destination traffic is dispersed to the pods via multicast. So, there is a requirement for the IPN to support PIM bidirectional mode multicast. The control plane between the two pods leverages MPBGP EVPN. However, this is how endpoint information is advertised between the pods so that communication from the endpoint in one pod to an endpoint in another pod is similar. As you can see in the diagram I mentioned, multipod topology is considered as a single ACI fabric. Thus, all of the leaf and spine switches deployed across the pod are under the control of a single EPIC cluster. This means that each fabric and its associated pods are considered as a single administrative domain. A perfect example would be if you were to deploy an endpoint group which stands for EPG on your fabric. That EPG will be available across all the pods giving you flexibility of where to deploy the virtual machines, containers and bare metal servers. Let's talk about multi-site. ACI multi-site is a two or more fabric of ACIs connected. Each of these fabrics are managed by its own EPIC cluster that is managed as a unit using an ACI multi-site orchestration. Each ACI site consists of a single EPIC cluster managing a spine leaf. Cisco ACI multi-site arose from a requirement provided complete isolation both at the network and the tenant change domain levels across the ACI network. While similar to multipod, ACI multi-site represents a different architecture within its own case. So, looking at the diagram, we can understand that in a multi-site topology, each fabric could be considered as a separate availability zone. In the diagram, I have mentioned the availability zone A and the availability zone B. This availability, this availability zones are managed by multi-site orchestrator. The nature of the architecture ensures that whatever happens to one availability zone in terms of network level, failures and configurations mistakes will not impact other availability zone. This guarantees business continuance at highest level. The Cisco ACI has been transformative solution that has brought many data center into the world of software defined networking. Proper scaling and extending a data center network is a challenge in many enterprise and ACI aims to make that process much more straightforward. The ACI multipod and multi-site architecture are just two of the method 
and organization can use to deploy and extend policy in a flexible way in a multitude of locations. Now, usually people think what is right, either multi-site is right for the environment or multi-pod is right. So, if you want to determine what is the right path, then you have to prim primarily uh, focus on these three things. What your use case is and the nature of the connectivity between the location. For multi-pod, specifically, the pods must have no more than 50 milliseconds of latency between them. Within a single building, they should be within a single building or on a campus. This should not be an issue. However, if your location are to be further apart where the latency is close or exceeds 50 milliseconds, then multi-site will be a better choice. Second, scalability is also a concern worth noting. An ACI multi-pod deployment can scale up to 12 pods as of ACI version 4.1 with a maximum of 400 leaf switches in a single deployment. If you are running close to this number, then deploying a separate ACI site will allow you to scale beyond these figures. And thirdly, if data, sector, if data protection is a requirement, then you might consider ACI multi-site as an inter-site VXLAN traffic can be optionally encrypted using Cisco's CloudSec technology. Now let's jump to some of the facts. Did you know Okta Networks is a leading institute for IT network training in the country? Our headquarters are based in Mumbai. We have trained a lot of people from all around the globe. We have not only supported them technically, but also if they have now let's jump any to some of the facts. Issues. We never Did care about know? time. We Octa have Networks is a leading by seven institute support for all our training trainings in the country. We are the Our only provider based in giving Mumbai. all the technology training. We have under the same roof trained a lot of people from we have all around the globe. Equipped for we all have the not only supported them with technical latest state but of art. also if they have got any. We are the only issues. providers. We now care about made time. more than we five thousand CCIs support to all and our candidates. around a hundred CCDs. We are the only provider giving if all you have technology any training, queries under the same our website www.we have racks equipped you can for either all email the us, technologies contact us through whatsapp with this latest state of facebook art. skype and we are the only providers the social you can even connect us with more the social than 500,000 ccis here are the links and around 100 and ccds let me know if you have any query if you have you just any queries in the comment you can section visit our website or you can follow me on LinkedIn. You can either email us, us name is Salman us through WhatsApp. You have, if you have Facebook, Facebook queries, Skype, then you can ping me on LinkedIn as well. All the social, you can I even like connect us with the social media and have a nice day. Ahead. Here are the links. And let me know if you have any query. You can just comment in the comment section. Or you can follow me on LinkedIn. My profile name is Salman Dhuna. You have, if you have any query, then you can ping me on LinkedIn as well. I would like to thank you for watching and have a nice day ahead.